Hey, Chandler Crouch here. This video is going to have your real estate market update, where prices have come from, where they're going to, how it affects you. I'm going to cover my pillow. Everybody's been asking me about my pillow, so I'm going to tell you about that. Then I'm going to give you a money saving tip out of the book that we wrote, that I wrote for our company, for our clients. So there's going to be some good stuff out of there. I'm going to talk with you a little bit about Amazon coming to town and what that means for you. Then last but not least, I'm going to go over what's going on with tax protests. There are a couple new things this year that you need to be aware of, and then I'm going to let you know how I can use your help. Okay, so let's get to it. Okay, the first thing you need to know about a real estate market is that we've seen interest rates rise for the fifth straight week in a row. Okay, this is going to be the single biggest thing that affects our local real estate market because the, the higher rates go, the less people will be able to afford. The folks in the upper tier pricing, the luxury homes, they're gonna be affected the most. So let's keep an eye on that. But let's take a look right now at where real estate prices are. So January dipped quite a bit and that's completely normal for January. It's just a seasonal trend. We're going to see prices rise sharply in February. Um, it, one thing I wanna take note of here is that in December, we matched the high point of last year. So all indications just based on that alone is that our real estate market is still screaming hot and it will continue to be that way for the next year as long as rates don't go up too much. But let's take a look at the inventory of homes for sale. So this has to do with supply and demand. We can see that in December it was one of the lowest points for real estate inventory in, the, in, in, in history in our North Texas area. And you just don't know without looking at um, some other factors here if that's because demand was so high or supply was so low. Okay, actually in January, you can see inventory levels crept up just a little bit. All right, let's look at the closed sales. Closed sales tells us what the demand is doing. Demand was, was it dropped quite a bit. Actually, it's a little bit lower in January than it was January this time last year, okay? So let's look at the new listings. This has to do with the supply. This tells us what supply is. Supply was up quite a bit, okay? So everybody waits till after the holidays to put their house on the market. That's what we're seeing here, and that's the reason why we've seen real estate prices dip just a little bit here in January is because supply uh, took off in January and we're going to see the, the demand gobble up that supply. Prices are going to catch back up in February. Okay, let's talk about my pillow. A shocking number of people since the last video have been asking me about my pillow. You know what I'm talking about, right? My pillow from this guy. Okay, so it's just crazy how so many people with neck problems and folks that have been thinking about switching their pillow, they've been asking me, is it the most comfortable pillow you've ever slept on? And I can 100% for sure, without a doubt, tell you that my wife has been sleeping beautifully, okay? Uh, I actually have only slept on this pillow three nights. Uh, the first night that I got it, and then my wife kicked me off of it, and then miraculously, as if she knew I was gonna be doing an update on the video here, um, Two nights ago, she, my, my, I went to go, go to sleep and my pillow, my pillow, was, was almost magically just sitting there waiting for me. And so now I've gotten to sleep the last couple nights on the pillow. It's comfortable. I'm still fairly partial to the Tempur-Pedic memory foam pillow. Um, but when I ask my wife, if it, I, because she's had enough time to get used to it by now, I ask her, is this the most comfortable pillow you've ever slept on? And she kind of looks at me and gives me one of those you know, so, so, you know, it's maybe not a definitive yes, it's the most comfortable, but it's at least, uh, it, it ranks. It's top five most comfortable pillows that we've ever experienced. You just don't go uh, thinking about how, how, you know, rating your pillows that often. But anyway, comfortable pillow, uh, go try it for yourself and, uh, and let me know. All right, now I've got a money-saving tip for you out of our handy-dandy little book here that I wrote for our company, for our clients. It is it has saved our clients tons and tons of money. Everybody loves the book. So what I'm gonna tell you about today is just one tip we have for sellers. And it's this line right here. Um, and it's just about uh, something that most people aren't aware of, that the government, the Texas Real Estate Commission, changed our contract recently to say that if the buyer and seller agree 
that the seller must repair an item in the home before closing, that now that repair must be done by a licensed professional. Whereas in the past, if the homeowner was skilled in an area and, they, and, and the buyer and seller agreed, then the seller could go ahead and do those repairs themselves. Well, now uh, has to be a licensed professional. So what, what could have been a $5 repair job before, now the professional's gonna come out, they're probably gonna charge a trip fee, it's gonna cost 75 bucks, and it's gonna, it's gonna uh, cost you a ton of money, okay? So, uh, if you're skilled in an area, do repairs, keep up with the maintenance of your house right now, uh, get your house in tip-top shape before you put it on the market, and that'll save you a bunch of money. You may have heard in the news recently that Amazon is looking at relocating their headquarters to somewhere else in the, in the country, and the good news is that the Dallas-Fort Worth area has made the top 20 list, okay? Um, there are all sorts of things that Amazon is looking at, I'm sure, when they're deciding where they're going to move to. A handful of things that um, are really interesting about this move is that Amazon will bring with it 50,000 jobs over a 10-year period of time to whatever city they move to, okay? So some things that they may be looking at are cost of housing, uh, the affordability rate of the area. They're gonna look at the, um, just how, how business friendly the state is that they're, they're looking at possibly moving to. And so I can just give you a couple stats right now. In the Dallas-Fort Worth area, we've had some incredible demand on our housing from companies like Toyota and State Farm and Liberty Mutual moving to this area. Uh, there are all sorts of things. I, 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 I think I uh, uh, heard Lowe's was gonna hire 900 new employees and it just, the list goes on and on. Um, only New York City has had more construction than the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We're at $22 billion of construction over this past year. And, and like I said, it just goes on and on. U-Haul tracks the number of one-way trips they have. And this is an awesome stat. I'm so glad they keep track of this. But more one-way trips are coming into the Dallas-Fort Worth area than any other area in the country. And we all know why. It's because we're awesome and uh, that's it. So uh, as Amazon is looking at where they're going to move to from the folks that I trust uh, the most, they're saying that, that where the talent pool is, where the human resources are, where they're the top-notch employees are, that's going to be where they're gonna focus their, um, their, their sites at. And also, maybe even the cost of employees. So the wages are different for different industries across the country. Um, from what I've read, Toronto is probably number one in this area, and then we're, we're still in the top five. So who knows? I don't know if Amazon will come to this area, but if they do, it's gonna keep uh, some nice uh, pressure on the demand of housing in this area. Last but not least, property tax protests are coming up. Last year, we helped 3,200 people. We have a goal to help 6,000 people this year. And I believe if you help spread the word, we can accomplish that. Uh, we just want to help as many people as possible. I met with the appraisal district folks recently, and they said one big change is coming up. The deadline to protest is not going to be May 31st. It's going to be May 15th. And I have to tell you, I know that the, the, the process here is just... Uh, it's screwed up, okay? The taxing system, it's just messed up. Um, but the people that have been helping me help you guys, they have a completely thankless job and there are so many people at the appraisal district that do good work. And so I just wanna say thank you to them. Uh, we rely on their cooperation to help you reduce your values. And so uh, just wanna mention that. Um, I am looking for volunteers to help, okay? So if you know anybody that is reliable, smart, would show up to work, and uh, do a great job and treat it like a high paying job, but do it on a volunteer basis. Um, just, just have a passion to serve and help others. We're looking to help a bunch of people and there's no way that my small staff is gonna be able to help that many people for such a short period of time. So if you know of anybody that would like to volunteer as a community service project, they're comfortable with technology and talking to people and that sort of thing, we would love to talk with them and possibly uh, use their help whenever we do the tax protests here. Uh, we're gonna be sending out an email probably uh, around the 1st of March, I'll say, okay, so don't hold your breath, but if you haven't gotten an email by March 15th or so, uh, check your spam folder, you may have uh, ended up there. So that is all I have. I hope you guys have a great day, great week, and I can't wait for the next video. Thank you so much, and I wish you the best. Bye.